All right, welcome back to another Lithium SDK video. Today, uh, we're gonna be checking out kind of wallet interactions within the SDK, right? Um, and so this will allow us to actually take our private key or even generate a new private key. And um, from there, we can you know interact with that private key and send ALF to it and so forth, right? So let's go and let's do that. So what we're gonna do is here is I have basically a node query.js file. Um, and this is where I've written some of my lines of code. Um, but I'm not going to use any of these lines of code today. Instead, I will be writing uh, some new lines of code that will allow us to actually run some of these, uh, you know, private wallet functions and generating private keys and um, that sort of thing, right? So, as always, the first thing we're going to want to do is, is we're going to want to get the dependencies for the actual, uh, like, Web3 wallet that we can interact with in Node.js. And so... We're gonna grab those. And this one's actually gonna allow us to actually get a private key from uh, a private key that's already been established, right? And so we can actually take a private key that we already have and then actually interact with it from the wallet. This is the same method that I used, by the way, to get the ALF on the Twitter competition. I'll put a link to that in the description in this video and um, hopefully that will kind of keep you in the know if you can actually get some alpha from these private keys whether they get exposed or not um i would consider that ethical ethical hacking because it's not really even a hack right um so yeah so what we're going to do is here is we're going to enter in the private key that we can get from our lithium wallet right we'll get that in the developer settings and so i'm going to grab the private key real quick and then we'll be right back All right, so I'm back and I have a private key. And what we can do with this private key is, is we can just enter it in here with Control V. And now that we've entered in that private key, uh, it's unique to that group and that group only. So whatever assets are on that group are um, going to be uh, available to be sent from this private key. Uh, any assets on other groups, you know, whether or not it starts out on group zero and then moves to group one or group two or, you know, just that, um, those individual keys uh, groups and addresses have different private keys and thus uh, this private key is specific to this group and this address so what we can do now with this const wallet equals new private key is we can actually instantiate this wallet function and we can do a simple async function like um, you know adding or sending some alf just something as simple as that right but in this case we're basically just going to console.log the account and make sure that it does in fact exist and see the contents of the uh, wallet, right? So let's do that real quick. Well, that's weird. Oh, we missed the, uh, the colon there. The node provider that we are using is in fact the public Olyphium service. So in this case, all right, cool. So we can see here that uh, the key type is default, the address is this right here, and the public key is this. We can now get the actual uh, wallet account assets as well, if we kind of exchange that function out a little bit. So let's do that real quick too. Actual contents of the wallet, which is a, which is this function here. We have an async get get assets, which takes wallet addy, basically uses the node provider like we did last time, fetches the assets, and so we'll do get assets of wallet whoop, wallet dot address, and what that will do is console dot log it. So let's um. Let's see that this actually logs the assets real quick, just so we can see in conjunction how the SDK can work with other components and you can actually get data. And so in this case, we see that we have a balance of, you know, 1481, obviously that's the, you know, decimal, uh, it shows like decimals. So you have like your, your dust alphs basically. Um, and then balance hint down there is kind of the main thing where we see that we actually have 1.48131 alpha. 
So we will exchange those decimals. And this should work here. Let's give it a shot. Uh, not enough balance free. Maybe transfer a smaller amount. Likely the gas is what's still taking up. Space. That or I've just placed way too many zeros. But I did not. So we can see that we've just sent that transaction now. And we can actually check the Explorer real quick. So let's... Um, Let's get an explorer. Actually, what we can do is, is we can actually get a balance hint on that now that we've sent. Uh, and so we'll remove that send out function and we'll check the balance repeatedly until we see, yep. So balance hint, as you can see, is now 00931518171, you know, alphs. And that's considered basically dust alpha in my opinion. Um, but you can see that, um, what was that current the previous value is now the new value here so this is how you use the uh, olympium sdk to interact with the wallet um we'll go into interacting with contracts but that will require us to actually have um, contracts built and made um, otherwise interacting with contracts that aren't ours uh, is a little bit more complicated so for the sdk um it is kind of crucial that you are um building it in a way that uh, if you don't have access, you I mean, even if you had access to the uh, contract code, that would actually be good because that would be enough for you to actually interact with the contract and understand how it works because the contracts are already going to be deployed on the uh, mainnet via the project that you're trying to uh, instantiate off the SDK. Otherwise, um, that'll be the next video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.